on the next, there will be court cases as far as the issue of uh, former governor of Kogi State is concerned. Talking about Yaya Bello and uh, the, the case that was referred against him by the EFCC. And it's still generating conversation and talks around the country, which is why we're keeping it right here to explore even further what is going on with what is being seen as a judicial standoff. And so many conspiracy theories have been said here and there, everybody making claims and grandstanding as to who is right and who is not right. But we've been joined on the program right now by a professor of international human rights law, faculty of law, Bayes University, uh, Professor Agbo Madaki joins us from Abuja City. Prof, thank you for coming on the program. Yeah, thank you. Good evening. Uh, perhaps I'll start with where I, I, I left off for piggyback from uh, a conversation I had prior to this time, uh, which is what exactly is happening with the former Kogi state governor? Is it a question of evasion of arrest or fear of not getting justice despite the promises of state protection as promised for every citizen, as promised by the AGF? So let's begin the conversation from that point. Uh, if you ask me, and uh, based on the injunctive order issued by the Kogi State High Court, arising from the enforcement of his fundamental human right, which he fired and which the court decided, it will be my opinion that he's probably enjoying the coverage, the umbrella, or the, or the protection of the law. Uh, because the, the, the judgment or the order of that court, as delivered on the 17th of April, 2024 is very clear and unambiguous. It was a case filed by the former governor, Yaya Bello, against the economic financial crime. And the court ruled, in, you know, in their rule order, which I have seen, I've not read the full judgment, but I've seen their rule order, restraining the respondent, that is the EFCC, from either harassing, intimidating, arresting, or prosecuting him in respect of a particular child that, was, that is pending uh, before the Federal High Court. And because that order has not been vacated, I, to my mind, it would be wrong to say that he's running away from the law. I would rather say he's enjoying the umbrella or the coverage or the protection of the law. Uh, based on what you said, because these court orders that have been seen as conflicting is a big controversy now. Somebody was asking us to both the people that were protecting him as those that as against those that are, try, are protect uh, are trying to arrest him are all holding documents emanating from court which is to be obeyed now from the last hearing that was before uh, justice um american Witte, the lawyer to uh, mr bello had told the court that the efcc had actually appealed that judgment or that ruling by uh, the Kogi State High Court, and the hearing is meant to be for today. And they were angry, say, since that issue is to be here tomorrow, I beg your pardon, so it's to be heard tomorrow, which is a substantive case of the human rights and all of that. Why did they invade them? But the EFCC lawyer, uh, I, I think Mr. Kemi, has said that within the ruling of the judge in that particular case in Kogi State, the judge said the only way he can be arrested or arraigned is that if the EFCC must first seek leave from the court to do so. And in line with that judgment, they went to seek an ex parte, which gave them the premise to go and arrest him. You're a professor of law. Help me make sense of this situation. You know, one thing that we must get very, very clear is the nature and category of the matter that was filed before the Kogi State High Court. For the point of emphasis, it was commenced under the um, 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 enforcement you know, of fundamental human rights, what we call the FREP fundamental right enforcement procedure. That is the order was made. And like I said, it's very, very, very clear, the restraining order. And then the second leg of it, and I have no right uh, uh, to predetermine or to comment on the matter that is before the Federal High Court, because in law we say it is sub -judice. But what the court say, which to my mind is very clear, that yes, he can be arraigned before the Federal High Court 
if proper charges are filed. But however, say provided that he will not be arrested or detained before facing his trial. If you ask me, because uh, to the glory of God, I'm privileged that other than being a professor of law, I have also been very active legal practice in the last 40 years. And up till now, I'm still involved in all the courts in the land by way of, uh, I love litigation. And, and, and what is very, very clear, in law, when you prefer a charge, you must serve it on the defendant. And when you serve it on the defendant and he appears before the court and plea is taken, then the trial can, the trial can be said to, uh, to have commenced. So if you ask me, even the, even, even the ruling, the court said, yes, this is without prejudice to the power of the federal high court to make any order to determine any issue between the parties, that is the applicant and the respondent, as the case may be. So if you ask me, I do not see any conflicting orders. And in any case, the position of the law is very clear. A judgment of the court, whether it is void or useless or stupid, remain valid and enforceable, and it enjoys all persons and citizens in the country to obey the court order. Let it never be said, and may the error never come, that court orders will be dis disobeyed and then citizens will, uh, uh, will clap their hand. Even if, even if the respondent, the EFCC, even if they have appealed against the ruling of the COVID st uh, State High Court, it is a recondant position of the law that an appeal does not serve or act as a stay of execution. You know, so if you file appeal, you either apply you know, for a stay, depending on the, nature of, of, of the nature of the order of the court, but until that order is set aside, it remains valid and enforceable. Prof, are you aware whether or not he has been invited and has not been showing up, or is they're trying to serve him and he's not been reachable? I just wanted to get that information. Because we're wondering that the right procedure should have been a simple invitation, or as simple as that. I am not in a position, and neither do I in any way, hold brief for former Governor Yaya Bello. And because I'm not clairvoyant, I'm not in a position to know whether he has been served. But as you rightly put it, you know, what they ought to have done is to invite him so that they can serve him with a copy of the charge sheet if any is available. I think the challenge EFCC has, has faced over the years is conducting their trial, you know, what one may call media trial or public trial as the case may be. And I think that is right. a complete violation of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of All right, Nigeria. Bro, no bro, Nigerian bro. citizen okay. should be subject. Yes, go ahead. Just land on your thoughts. Go ahead. I'm due for a break. I'm going to follow up on this question. Just yes, land but, on but your I, I, was, I was going to say, I was going to say, I was going to say that when you begin to conduct a criminal trial or civil on the pages of newspapers or the electronic media or the social media, it is to my mind that you are subjecting such a citizen to inhuman and degraded treatment. Because inhuman and degraded treatment has, the, the definition of it has been expanded okay. under, under ICAR, that is the International Covenant Against Torture, okay. Human and Degrading Treatment. So anything that puts the person to pain mentally, psychologically, you are torturing the person. In I have a, a follow-up follow question. I have a follow-up question. Fight the person and, yes, go ahead. Now, if, because the money we're talking about is not a joke. The state high court <clears throat> is dealing with fundamental human rights. The federal high court is, is dealing with money laundering, money laundering to the tune of 80 billion naira. That's a lot of money, allegedly, that they say he diverted for personal use with his cronies and all of that. The hearing that will be for the 23rd, which is a, uh, on Tuesday, I guess, is basically for possible substituted service and arraignment. If EFCC is pursuing substituted service, isn't that a proof that he was evading service in the first place? I think I need to correct an impression. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, sometime last they had reason to say that law does not work with sentiment and emotion. That law is law as codified. Law is law as prescribed. Law is law as written. It's not about the quantum of the amount that is involved that matters. In law, if you like, steal one trillion naira, unless somebody has steal five naira, 
what the Constitution contemplates is that the offense must be written and the punishment thereon prescribed. So if the law says, if you steal, the punishment is seven years, it does not matter whether it is one trillion naira, neither does it matter whether it is five, uh, five, five naira, the punishment will be the same. So let us drop this sentiment about the amount of money that is being banded. What should weigh on our mind is the supremacy of the Constitution. The Constitution is very, very, very clear. Under Section 36, dealing with fair hearing, the presumption of innocence. He said anyone who is charged with a criminal offense is presumed to be innocent. Prof, and prof, here we have a scenario prof, that I believe I, the gentleman, uh, Yaya Bello, has prof, not even been I'm, charged. But the I'm position important. of the law, uh, uh, just a minute, sir. Ju ju just a minute, sir. Just a minute, sir. So the point that I'm making, and I make it very strongly, that he, he, the, 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 he enjoyed that constitutional protection that presumed him to be innocent until he must have gone through the entire gamut of criminal trial Prof. and found guilty by a, a, a court properly constituted or a tribunal. So, so it's not an issue of the amount of money that is involved, but every Nigerian citizen must be treated with Prof. respect Prof. and dignity. Prof, if I may, I, I need to rephrase, yes, perhaps I need to rephrase my question. I did posit the money, but my question really is, if the EFCC on Tuesday is pursuing two things, first of which is, we say you stole this amount of money. We want you to come and answer for stealing this amount of money, allegedly, but you are running away from being served the court papers and all of that. That's why I'm asking, if they are seeking substituted service, isn't that a proof that it's been evading service in the first place? That's my question. You know, you know, you see, we make total mess of the Nigerian system. Here is a gentleman that by virtue of his classification as a former governor, he enjoys police protection. He has police escort, DSS, and whatever you may call. And the police saying that this person attached to the former governor are no longer their staff? That at the, at the pricking of the term that they will have information as to his whereabouts. So how do you say somebody that you have provided with security that is, is, is evading service or evading trial? I think the, the whole thing is about grandstanding and Gestapo tactics in order to win public support. The truth of the matter is that for those of us that are students of jurisprudence, we are not mindful of the fact that public opinion may impact either positively or negatively on the judicial process. And, and I think exactly that is what the EFCC is doing by trying in the court of public opinion. Let up, drop that gauntlet. Let them do the right thing. Invite, invite the gentleman. I believe if he's invited to come to EFCC because of the subsisting and valid order of a high court and all courts in the land are banned even to enforce it, even if he goes there, he cannot be arrested because the second leg of that all order right. is very clear. <clears throat> that yes, all you right. can charge him to court, but you, you don't arrest him. You don't right, detain bro. him. Look at Trump, President my... Trump in America. We, look at President Trump. Was he arrested? Just... Was he detained? But he's facing his trial. Prof, this, this is Nigeria, so we're positing it within our climb. Uh, I don't know whether you really answered my question. I'm just saying that, I'm just stating what, was, what happened in court on Friday or Thursday, that they are pursuing substituted service. That would naturally suggest that they've been having a difficult time serving him. But I must thank you for your position on this. Uh, professor, no, but, can I, but, but, but on the last bit, but on the last bit, can I say something very quickly? No, we're totally you know, the out. The position of... in law is not. Ten seconds, prof. No, I wanted to. I wanted to clarify on the issue of substitute service. The position. Okay, in we, law. I, I understand. It's we not don't, only when somebody is. We're evading. totally out of time. We're totally out of time. I just needed you to help us interpret what that means. You're the lawyer. I'm not. Professor Agbo Madaki, Dean, Law Department, Bates University. I must thank you for your insight. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you very much.